sound of my voice let us end this convocation oh god on the plateau of great testimonies oh god and we vow to give you the glory we vow to give you the praise in jesus name amen let's be seated in the presence of the lord we thank god for these patterns we thank god for covenant we thank god for his moadim his appointed times that he has slated for his sons and daughters, that he, at some point in time he calls us into his holy chambers, he gathers us in a place, hallelujah, the place called there, and when we revere the place, and we show up in the place, as he told the Israelites, three times in a year must you appear before the Lord, giving them the Passover, giving them um, the Feast of Pentecost, giving them the Feast of Tabernacles, hallelujah, Amen. He has appointed us KHM to have convocations. Hallelujah. The tail end of the month so that he will prep us for the coming month that we do not know. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is not a conference. This is not just a program. It is a gathering of sin. It's a convocation. It's a solemn assembly where we have gathered to afflict our souls in order to put their body under so that our spirit man will rise. So that our tripartite nature will be in the right equilibrium. Hallelujah. For a false balance is an abomination before the Lord. And I have that blessed anticipation that my God is going to meet you at the point of your need. Say, I am the one. Hallelujah. I have not come to exercise myself in a religious um, law or duty. But I have come to have a relationship with God. Anytime you relate with God, he impacts his bliss and his blessings over you. Amen. We thank God. We all usually open up our convocation, fasting and prayers um, with, with um, worship time. A time that we come, we value God, we honor him. Against all odds, we bring our sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, those of you who had your quiet time going through the Pascaris devotional, you know, you would have realized that... Um, a question was asked that where is my honor where is my honor and so we want to pick our scriptures from malachi chapter number one malachi chapter number one and from verse number six we want to read from malachi chapter number one verse number six we will also read from romans chapter number 13 maybe pick the verse number one and also Affirm the verse number seven. Verse number seven. And then we will also um, kind of pass through and greet Matthew chapter 15. <laughs> we say, Hi, Matthew chapter 15, and specifically your verse number one to 11. Maybe we will look at that. Hallelujah. I'll be able to glean some stuff. So join me as we journey in his presence. Amen. A son honored his father. A son, a daughter, honored his father. The word honor means to make heavy, kabod. Kabod, to make heavy. A son honored his father and a servant his master. So everyone has one, somebody he or she must honor. If then, there is a colon, the juice of the sentence still flowing. If then I be a father, where is my kabod? Where is my honor? Where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Where is my fear? Where is my fear? Where is my fear? And then it goes on, it says that, Say the Lord of hosts unto you, priests. We are kings and priests unto the Lord. Tell your neighbor, we are kings and priests unto the Lord. And some of us forget, we think that it's just, you know, uh, something that's been relinquished to, 
pastors alone. It's only pastors who are pre- No, we are all kings and priests in the kingdom of God. So, oh, priest, he said, that despise my name. Jesus taught the disciples to pray, say, our father, when you pray, say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He says that now my name is in disrepute. Priests that despise my name. And ye say, where have we despised thy name? The impudence. And that is the generation we find ourselves. We have been taught to be, taught to be independent thinkers and critical thinkers. And to question and be able to defend our thesis and our project well. It doesn't matter what you write, whether an extreme right or extreme left, all you need to do is to defend it well and have your mark. Clap for you. All right. So then, <laughs> so we keep on defending even when we don't have to defend. And so the upgrade to the people of God. May the Lord God have mercy on us. And so the slot of sentence we can keep in our heart of heart is this, that if I'll be the father, where is my honor? Which other scripture did I mention? What? Romans chapter 13 and verse number one. Let every soul, every suke, every soul be subject who put us to come under the less is blessed of the better. So come under, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There are higher powers. There are higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, whether you know it or not. The powers that be are ordained of God. Let me just do the two and then just go to the verse number seven. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. The powers came in and said that, oh, this is our rules and regulations. But you said, oh, I will frown on that tax. And said, when you resisted, you have resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. I'm not reading from the Old Testament. It's the New Testament here. Let, let, me, let me just jump to, for time's sake, get to verse number seven, please. And so there is, it opens up with a Greek word called apu de, uh, didomi, as in terms of giving. Giving something, but in a more emphasized way. A more emphasized, so use render. Render therefore to all the dues. Oh, so there are powers. You go to the website, the occupational realm, there are powers. Academia, there are powers. You get to the, to the Christian, realm, there are powers. You get into even other uh, religious sects, there are powers. You get into the traditional realm, there are powers, traditional leaders, the government, and its legislature, and then all those you know, arms of government. Hallelujah. And so he says that, render therefore to all the abuse. The abuse. So you are working, and you are owing, and you don't know you owe. You working, you owing, and you don't know that you owe. You will know very soon that you owe honor unto many. So it says over here, pay, de- render therefore to all the abuse. Now, colon, Jews still flowing from the sentence. Tribute, number one. Everybody say tribute. So tribute, to whom tribute? Is you all the powers have their due? You go to snitch, there is something you will pay. 
You might go to IRS, you might pay something else. You might park your car at the market area and the parking space comes with a toll. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You go to the registry, there is something you pay. So there is something you owe that you might not know that you owe, that you still owe, that you must pay. So tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, say custom. Hallelujah. Amen. And fear. Fear. There are some of them when you see them, your, your swag must change. I saw when the, when the queen, they were doing the final funeral for the queen. And then they were passing before the palace. And some of the servants were dressed there with some of his do uh, dogs. And other, when they saw the coffin passing, they did their leg. I gave him an you. They did something like this and did some way. I said, wow, you fun you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So custom fear. Some of them also bow their head. Fear to whom fear is you. Honor to my own. Estimation, this estimation of things. Honor to whom honor is due. Honor to whom honor is due. May the Lord God bless his word. Amen. Amen. Just permit me within some few minutes. Let me just run through um, um, uh, Matthew chapter 15. Just pick some few verses out there. And then uh, so when we get the glimpse of the story, we just move on. Then Jesus Christ, Jesus, um, he says what? Then came Jesus, the scribes and Pharisees. Then came to Jesus, the scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, so Jesus was in the Galilee area there. These ones had come about, about three days' journey to where Jesus was, as if they were the spiritual MISs or Scotland Yard detectives who were supposed to check what Jesus was doing. So they had come either by foot or by donkeys. They had come there. Wow. You wonder how people, how far people can go when they want to check you out. <laughs> so now verse number two. Can we do that quickly? Why do they decide when they came? No, because they are coming to check him out. So they came with questions and started probing. Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions, the paradoxes of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Hey. <laughs> they are peeping through Jesus' dining hall and seeing that they don't wash hands when they are eating bread. Hello? Because they have strangers of rules which were not slated in the Ten Commandments but they believe that it is their rules and they you must follow. Ceremonial washing of hands. Go on please. Go on please. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? So he knew that they have slated their own commandments Aside the commandments of God. So he answered them with a question. So then let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. For God commanded saying, Honor thy father and mother. So now Jesus is drawing from the commandments the importance, some of the important things that people had to know that they had relegated to the background. Honor thy mother and father. And he that cursed the father or mother, let him die the death. <laughs> Hello? Are we here? Who is your mother? Who is your father? Who is your spiritual father? Who is your mother? Spiritual father. 
verse 5, please. But ye say, so they say otherwise, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, his mother, it is a gift. By whosoever thou mightest be profited by me. Go on to verse number 6. And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. So they said, opposite what the commandment of God was saying. Pedia Rus. Thus have ye made, and Jesus was telling, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. Usually say your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. Verse number seven. Then he reprimands them. Ye hypocrites. Well, well did, well did uh, Isaiah or Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, "This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth; they will sing all the songs, and honor me with their lips." But their hearts are far away from me. I hope it doesn't describe anybody who is here. But in vain they do worship. Do we worship in vain? In vain do they worship me. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Verse number 10 please. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Understand. <laughs> Verse number 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth defileth uh, defile a man. Amen. Amen. Not that which comes out of the mouth defiles the man. I, I goes into the mouth defiles the man, but that which comes out of the mouth. My question to us tonight is, where is my honor? This is what God is asking, where is my honor? Where is my honor? When it comes to the subject of honor, people have different variations, perceptions, notions and pockets of opinions and so then we try to honor according to our own definitions of honor hallelujah but when we say honor in the greek is timayo in the hebrew is kabod and it means to put value on in the kabod means just to make something heavy make something heavy you get into timayos it means to reverse something um, you have a proper valuation of something to fix a value upon something like in the market case you have gone for some product you, you travel to go and buy the product at some basic fair and a, a, a price and then coming back to sell it you will have the buying price and the selling price and so you need to do a price fixation which our mothers know how to do better and so here we see over here that you fix a value. Tell your neighbor, fix a value. So fix a value upon or to revere to value of money paid and so on. Estimation, dignity, the dignity itself. So now so we get into this and you then realize this, that all of us in life, I usually say we are fixes, uh, fixators or, or valuers of life. We value things. This is what God has made us. We estimate. We make decisions that influence our destinies. But before you do that, you have to weigh things, pros and cons. How the thing will benefit you and therefore by that you put a premium on something. So if the thing will not benefit you, you don't want to dole out any money or energy or time in that regard. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so knowing the, the meaning of honor from the Hebraic and the Greek, 
you know, inference, it brings us to that place where then we come to the realization that God is a God who loves honor. And so in the montages of the strangest of the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, it begins with four things that brings honor to God. And the four things that brings honor to God, the fourth one is remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That is the fourth. And even that sentence is more copious, longer than all the other sentences that are written in the Ten Commandments. And right from there, it begins to talk about honor to men, ourselves. We need to honor each other. We need to honor each other. So God calls for a horizontal and a vertical honor. Somebody say horizontal and vertical honor. So vertically we honor God, horizontally we honor each other. Even though man is trying to say that we are different species on the earth, even though God has said he made all of us in his image, we think that black is lack. And why it is better, we begin to think that some other complexions and so on. So we have racial disparities. Apart from that, when it comes to sex, we have sexism also that comes into play. That, you know, the, 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 the male is more uh, whatever than the fee or vice versa, whichever way. We have pockets of opinion. Opinions are like noses. Everyone has one. Touch yours. So we all have opinions. And it will not cease. But at the end of the day, we have the barometer or the yardstick by which we measure honor. And that is God's yardstick. How does God revere us? How does God want us to revere him? He said we should not make any image under the earth or in the heavens like him. We should not bow down to any other God and so on and so forth. We should worship him and him alone because he is a jealous God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so then this makes us then come to the realization that God loves honor. God loves honor. And because he loves honor, when the devil fell, he wanted to come to town and seek all the honor that we give to God. And so Christ, our Savior, came in and said, Jesus, if you will bow down to me, I will give you. Because whoever you honor is the one who goes out to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so then we see over here that Jesus says, Thou shalt not worship any other person. Thou shalt worship only God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And none other. And the devil was outraged. And ever since he left Jesus, he has not stopped leaving you. So he keeps on following us that even though we come before him in God in church and we are trying to worship him, he tries to make our worship not to become spiritual or truthful. And so then Jesus must still come and say in John 4, 24, 23, 24 and thereabout, saying that the true worshipers must worship God in spirit. So even though we come before the Lord and we are worshiping God, he makes us false worshipers. And flesh worshippers. Instead of being spirit filled worshippers. And true worshippers. May the Lord God have mercy on us. Hallelujah. And so of course the scripture was right when they said that these people worship me with their mouth and with their lips. But their hearts are far away. And so as humans because we, when we do anything redemically for a while the body gets used to that thing and also if it's a pointing you are pointing by muzzle memory even when you have not taught it your hand goes are you here so you watch if you sing the song and the right song will come goosebumps will come on you but god is not in it and so we do stuff and after and a while you realize that now we become familiar with it we have our own liturgies with it. We have our own stuff with it. We make a religion out of it. And at the end of the day, we are making noise but going nowhere. Somebody shout mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and so then we see it's under essence, the horizontal honor. If you can worship God, if you can honor God well, then I bet you, you cannot worship horizontally well. You cannot revere each other well. And so the scripture says in Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 3. It says that, that we should esteem each other. 
We should value each other. We should revere each other better than ourselves. And let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness, in humility of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. In our world where we are preaching self-love, and selfish individualism is the order of the day, you will think about yourself before thinking about others. Somebody will even tell you, if I can love myself, how can I love you? Hallelujah. Amen. And so then we realize that at first going up, we realize that you were forced in the situation and the, the culture of the day when you see an elderly person, whether you know the person or not, you are going or somewhere and the person is carrying something, you have to go and carry what the person is carrying. If the person is older, how many ever had the opportunity of doing something like that? You carry the, you know you are going to the east. The person is going to the west. But you go to the west. And you see the person up. And then you greet the person. God says, God bless you. Even sometimes they will not say anything. But you have to go. You know you have done your dues. In the Tata bus and the Osa services that we used to board. Today they call it what? Alright. But I... When you, you have paid, you have your ticket, you have paid, and you see an elderly person, you must get up. You get up and you let them sit down. But today, nobody is nobody. Nobody is nobody. Nobody is nobody because the teenager realizes that what their mother had and was shaking that they couldn't shake, now they have some that they can also shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. Hallelujah. And so when the mother says one, they say three. When the mother says two, they say five. And so that has been the order of the day. Let's go to uh, uh, Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3. And if you could just get us the amplified version of this, we will salute you. It says, for by the grace of merited favor of God, giving to me, I want everyone among you not to esteem or think of himself more highly than he ought to. And so sometimes you realize that you don't want to honor somebody because you think that you are also a person. Who isn't a person? Everybody is a person. Is that not so? But he says that I want everyone among you not to esteem and think of himself more highly than he ought to. Not, he says, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance exaggerated opinion of his own his or her own important and exaggerated i said exaggerated opinion of his or her own importance but to rate his ability with sober judgment each according to the degree of faith apportioned by god to him amen Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But now what we see, we see that honor has become like a forgotten virtue. It's a virtue, a value, and a value that is forgotten or devalued in our day and age. And so then we look at what is happening and when it happens, on and on realize that there becomes a cultural clash even of the kingdom of God and the world that we find ourselves in and we don't know what to obey we are caught in between the two but we have a choice tell your neighbor you have a choice tell your neighbor you have a choice you have a choice to move ahead with the, with the, with the culture of the kingdom the precepts of God that calls us to honor than for you to shrink into traditions of men and say that I'm also somebody and I can do whatever I like. 
Tell your neighbor, move forward with honor. Hallelujah. It's very easy to dishonor. Very, very easy to dishonor. Amen. Amen. But as we read our devotion today, we said the greatest seed that every man can sow is the seed of honor. Honor is the key to access. Honor opens door. Show me people who are blessed. Show me people who are in high reputable, uh, you know, echelon of life. And I will tell you people who know how to honor. Honor is everything. It's a priceless virtue of life that we can toy with. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The reason is this, that God has wired this world in such a manner that irrespective of the time, we have a place. And I said in the course of the week that time and place are inseparably bound. Say time and place are inseparably bound. So in a particular time, God does something in a place. In a place. So we don't only have the history, but the place of the history. Of the happening. Hallelujah. And so when that happens, anytime we, there is a place, there are protocols. Anytime there are places, there are protocols. Spoken or unspoken. And again, to every relationship in life, our relationship with God and our relationship with fellow man, there are protocols. Spoken or unspoken. And your, 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 your ignorance of the protocol is no excuse. It's no excuse. It's no excuse. And so if you get to the place and it is the Asantimai uh, 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 Palace and there is a protocol and you don't know and with your nice tuxedo suit and you just drive in anyhow, you'll be charged. Why you be charged? Are we here? And so then if the protocol is not known, it's better for you to know because honor is appropriate and okay at every place in time in the world. There is no place that honor has been inappropriate. Honor is all right. Whether in the Christian norm or in our, our, our cousin's life, other sects of believers and so on and so forth. In as much as the person is a, a power, as in Romans chapter number 13, there is no power that exists without God. God has ordained all the powers. And so if you don't know and it's from this, and that, you don't say that it's because of this, or he belongs to this, he doesn't believe you or believe you are dishonoring the person. You do that to your own disservice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When honor has been given, remuneration also follows. When honor is given, reward also follows. When this honor is meted out, punishment, knowingly or unknowingly, follows. So in a place of where protocols are spoken or unspoken, you get to a place, you will find people in the place. And so in the place, you must honor the place that you find yourself in. Honor is appropriate in every environment. When you dishonor the place, the place will not yield its potency to you. That is it. And so Moses gets to the place of the burning bush. Exodus 3. And we realize that whilst he was drawing night to see why the bush is burning. But it, you know a bush is, is in flames but it's not burning. He gets closer and then he hears a voice. The place that you are standing is holy. Remove the sandals on your feet. Hallelujah. For you to be in connection with the presence of God in the place. Remove the shoes of your feet. Hey. And so he had to do that. That is the protocol for the place. Joshua gets into the place and they are going to fight. And then he sees the captain of the host of God's army standing there. And he said, that, are you for us or you are against us? He said, I'm the Lord, the captain of the Lord's army and I have now come. Where you are standing. The protocol is that you can't get from Pabuambaha. So he honors the place. Hallelujah. No matter who you are, you go before Pharaoh. You might not be the servant of Pharaoh, but you must give him his due. So in a place, you find people and you must give them their due. Honor to whom honor is due. Fear to whom fear is due. Tribute to whom tribute is due. In our world where I don't care, nobody minds anything. 
everybody is just going like that. Nobody cares whether it's the boss or whatever. You know, at first you wouldn't say some things before some people, but we don't care. We don't care again. We don't care again. And so then somebody also is asking that what is a protocol? Then Pastor Yasa said protocol, protocol. A protocol is a system that, you know, uh, what do you call it? Creates comfort and communicates honor. It creates comfort and, uh, uh, you know, communicates honor. So wherever you find yourself, there is a protocol. There is something you have to do. If you go against it, some can be at the peril of your own life. At the peril of your own life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God wants us to honor him. God wants us to serve him. And so in Malachi, the people of the Lord had come and then they were rather being impudent and then they were saying this. God is saying that if I be the father, when you take offerings to your, your governors and other, you give, him, give them whatever is due them. But when it comes to God, you treat me anyhow. You treat me anyhow. And so he comes in Malachi chapter number one, verse number six. He says, if I be the father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? These are times and seasons that we, 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 we frown on the things of God. When it comes to our own self, we give it all the attention that we have. We despise his name. We mention the name of God anyhow. When we are debating, oh Lord Christ Jesus, my God, are you really telling the truth? And so in some places, people don't do Christ, but when you hear Christ Jesus, it means that somebody is pissing them off. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is asking that where is my honor? Amen. And so if we've all got a choice, then honor is an absolute game changer. Tell your neighbor, honor is an absolute game changer. Hallelujah. We should be able to come to that place where we we'll honor the Lord. And then even with the death of our, our, our father and mother, the Bible says that is the only um, 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 covenant, commandment with a promise. Honor your father and mother so that your days shall be long on this planet earth. That is what God stipulates or that is what God says for his people. Amen. And so then we must look at what do we have. With what do we honor? We honor with our time. We honor with our transfect. We honor with our treasure. We honor with our strength. We honor with our valuables. And so the scripture says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so we have several instances in scripture where people came before the Lord and then they honored Lord like Cain and Abel. And then Abel honored the Lord. But tonight, our, my, my, my desire is at the end of the service, may you learn to honor the Lord and give him all the glory that is due his name. Isaiah 42 says that I am the Lord and he says that my glory will I share with no one. Hallelujah. God doesn't share his glory with anybody and he will not share it with you. If he will not share his glory with you, then you must make sure that you don't stand in his place of honor. Hallelujah. Many a time, you know, directly or indirectly, I am Isaiah 42, 8. Directly or indirectly, we take God's glory. We take God's glory. It might be something that collectively we all achieve. And you realize that we will all be fighting. Because we say that I brought him. If it could be a soul who came to church and said, it's me, I brought him. Hey. No human being can change a human being. And all the glory must be to the Lord. You may have gone for evangelism and spoken, but you don't know how many people might have sown the seed that you came to water. And God brought the increase. There are several people we have spoken to, we have done it, but they would never go to church. And they look at you and they make you feel powerless. That is where you really know that you can't change anybody. They can even accept the Lord Jesus, do all the things. And then they say, I still, I won't go to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So where is the place that we may have withheld tribute from those who deserve tribute? Based on our opinion, based on our perceptions, based on our prejudice, based on our pride and so on and so forth. Where is it that we have done this? Where is it that we have to give people fear but we did not give them the fear? Hallelujah. May the Lord God have mercy on us. Tonight we just very soon about to pray and then do the needful. Hallelujah. I want us to get into Acts chapter number 2 and verse num uh, Acts chapter 5 verse number 2. Uh, before we go to that place, let's leave that as a balloon and then talk about this. So then if honor is something that is, 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 is very valuable in the sight of God and then honor is the key to access, honor opens doors for people, honor is a game changer and so on. God requires so much that the Ten Commandments are honorable commandments or commandments of honor, then we must learn to honor. We must learn to honor. If that is so dear to God, then know that the devil will stand behind this honor and publicize this honor and make it look like it is very important than honor. So if that becomes so, then we have the accuser of the brethren and he only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And now that he does that, he comes with his agents and then he releases what I call enemies of honor. Enemies of honor. Enemies of honor. We want to look at that. And ooh. Enemies of honor. Enemies of honor. Enemies of honor. So, we could look at these enemies of honor as in pride is what? Pride. Pride is what? Pride is what? Pride is the number one enemy of honor. As a matter of fact, if you are not proud, you are humble. And humility will always exude honor. Humility will always exude honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Pride brought the devil down. Pride goes before the fall of a man. Pride is when you have overestimated yourself. A self, an, an over-exaggerated opinion of oneself. You think that you are better than everybody. That everybody should collapse their space and let your own space remain. Hallelujah. And so pride, are you proud that proud enough that even you don't see God in an atmosphere like this? You don't revere his presence. You see human beings, you are always taller, even though physiologically you are short. You are taller than everybody. Hallelujah. So pride is the number one enemy. When it comes that way, you're, you are puffed in your heart. You are puffed in your heart. And the Bible says pride, you know, goes before the fall of a man. God resists the proud. God resists the proud. So with pride, you can't even honor him. He's already resisting you like an enemy. He sets himself like an army. When God says he resists the proud, it's as if he has set himself like an army opposing you. Anytime we do not acknowledge God, you are a student, you are a mother, you are whatsoever, and you are not acknowledging God in prayer, in all that you are doing, it's a pointer to pride. Prayerlessness is pride. That's why yesterday I made us come to that place where you will charge the battery of your prayer. The battery level is low. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? Hallelujah. And, and, and so then the next thing that we talk, look at is prejudice. Or prejudice, if you want to call it prejudice. It's, it's just a two-syllable word. Hallelujah. You prejudge. Before the true judgment comes, you have already gone ahead and you have concluded. So per the person's weave, you have already judged the person. The person was so late, so he just found one of the flip-flops and wore it to church. You concluded. Hallelujah. By your environmental prophecy, you assess the person by the, the, the ambience around the person and you judge the person. So you prejudge. And, and when it happens that way, you know, you realize that even whom you have to give honor to think that you are better than the person. Why should I even greet? Hallelujah. Why, why, why should I even tone down my, 
my, my, no, let me be free. Let me shout. Let me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so by that, you get into a particular default. And because you have estimated, you have wrongly estimated whoever is ahead of you or the place. And so you emit dishonor. You release dishonor towards the place. And the next thing that we want to talk about with a greater enemy is your preference. Everybody has a preference. What we like. Ask your neighbor, what do you like? You don't like red things. So when you see anybody red, you, you, you judge. You don't like people who are too short. Ah, what did I say? Hallelujah. Amen. You don't like people who, 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 who have side bangs and then other things and their beard is long. You don't like them. You don't like them. But there could be that there is a fine one who has come to you and could do a better business with you. Hallelujah. Our preferences can make us prejudicial. Because of your preference. Yeah, you don't like black things. Anytime you see black, it's funeral. But you should travel and see. And you see that most of the dinner dress are black. Hallelujah. So when you get into such restaurants and you see nice couples in their blacks and other things, uh, spaghetti dresses and nice things and then uh, whatever tuxedo and then they are eating whatever say he this is the, if i were to get her dress i would go to the funeral with it. Would, because your your preference listen we are what you perceive your perception infects your attitude your habit what you see so your preference it makes it it it, 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 it programs your mind and that is who you are and sometimes, yeah, you are, you are that cool and reserved type. You don't like people who talk plenty. But somebody's, somebody's uh, temperament, the person, wherever you see, the person is everywhere. He has greeted everybody in the house. So you see, because of your preference of cool, calm, collected people, everybody is not cool, calm, introvertic. And so, the first thing is, even when the sister is coming to greet you, we jam now, but we jam. It should be a I'm on Corona. I don't Corona the bitch. So you, 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 my God, my God. Look at your neighbor smile and say, "Where? What are your preferences?" So, so by the time you realize, so now your preference could be in a worshipful atmosphere. You go there and you say that, ah, me anywhere I go in ch- for church, we must start the praises before we have worship. So we must dance and after we have sweated every the beat must go kum, ka, kum, ka. then we can have worship. But when you came here, the brother you just came, you were ready to dance. The brother says, shall we lift up our hands and come before the Lord? Say, this is not my preference. So all through the worship, you are not worshiping. Bros, hurry, 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 hurry. And go. Hallelujah. Oh, how many are seeing yourself in what I'm saying and you are the one? Oh, come on, where are you? You didn't come. I got your number by force. Pick the phone right now in the name of Jesus. Your call is not out of coverage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then the next enemy of honor is legalism. Legalism. So in here, that is why even in the, in the, in the scriptural essence and whatever, you, 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 are, you are filled with doctrines and dogmas and you know you have some um, hard line stance and so on. You are not malleable. Even when the Holy Ghost wants to move, your doctrine blocks the Holy Ghost. We are all in a prayer meeting and we were praying and the spirit of prophecy came on the sister with the Brazilian weave. And the sister started prophesying. And the prophecy is coming. He said, no, you should cover your head. Because you have not covered your head. The prophecy is not of God. 
Or you can't call this legalism. So we have some hardline things and they are ingrained in us from our upbringing where you raise, where you take and other things. But listen, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is the spirit. Is it 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18? The Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Jesus came to set us free from the law of sin and death. And so anything, hallelujah, by our own self we can be righteous. It is the imputed righteousness of God that helps us. Even when you try that, you won't lie again. Today alone you have lied 13 times. Thank God for Pascal season. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we here? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The fifth enemy, there could be more, but the fifth enemy I'm talking about tonight is hypocrisy. 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 And let me draw this from these Pharisees who came to, you know, see Jesus from a three-day journey. Even they themselves were would go for they themselves to go, they, they themselves were to go for a program, they would say they have no transport. But when they are going to check under somebody's eye, they were able to walk to go. And now they come, and then they the first thing they didn't greet him. God has said that I'll send you a Messiah. These are high priests, they are supposed to be able to recite the old testament without blinking an eye. And there are prophecies about Jesus. He did in Isaiah, unto us a son is born, unto us a whatever, a child is born, unto us a son. All those things are there. They came to Jesus. They couldn't even ask, oh, so you are the Messiah whom we are expecting. They came with legalities and hypocrisy. Came to check under his eyes. Why do your people eat without washing hands? Hey! And so on and so forth, and, and different things, and back and forth. Oh, so how were they seen? That is the question. So, what you see is what you become. Your perception is everything. Tell five people your perception is everything. Hallelujah. So under hypocrisy, we realize that it means that you must align with the Lord in order to see the way God sees. Because you can honor what you can see. If you can see it the way it is, you can value it the way it is, you can revere it. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. And so Jeremiah says, What you see, I will hasten my word to perform it. You have seen right, and therefore I will hasten my word to perform it. And so over here, we then say that what is then what is hypocrisy? Hypocrisy is when your words do not align with your actions. When your words do not align with your actions. So the scripture says, these people come to worship me with their mouth and their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Are we the description, that description? Are we the ones whose uh, features are being defined in this? Hallelujah. I pray that God by his power will help us. We live in a day and age that the devil is desecrating everything. He's, 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 he's sweeping everything that is what for, what worshiping. He's sweeping everything under the carpet. He is saying that, no, you can't value, put everything in the trash. There is no place for value and so on. And so now permit me to just talk about Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Nobody told them to go and sell their goods. But they went and sold it and brought a part of it and laid it. Why are you laying it upon the feet of the apostles? It is an act of honor. 
But you can't honor partially. Tell five people you can't honor partially. So they brought the, 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 the thing. It was theirs. Nobody told them. So listen, your time that nobody sees, your worship that you think that you are miming the song, but you are not actually worshiping. You are pretending for everybody to see. You, we are all here. We are worshiping, but you are browsing. You are replying Facebook messages. You are posting something on Instagram. You are also not in the media where you say that it's the media decks and they are doing some things while the main line church is going on. Have I brought the balance? Hallelujah. And so this was are the people who come before the Lord. And they honor the Lord, but others have sold their stuff, but these ones, they had sold and kept back something. They had kept back. Go on to verse number three for us. So, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie? Why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Anytime you dishonor, dishonor is a matter of the heart. It comes from the heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart for out of it is the issues of life. So you must come to that place where you will learn to make sure that your heart is pure. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Those who have a clean hand and a pure heart. How, how are you able to make your worship look like it is 100% meanwhile you are at loggerheads with five people in the church? So then Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart? To lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back. Everybody say keep back. Not fizomi. Not fizomai. Exactly. Not fizomai. Not speak from not speak. It means from apart, clandestine. You know, uh, uh, you come to that place where it kind of like even uh, like embezzle. Sequestrate. You embezzle. You keep back. It's as if you have stolen part of something. Like some of you, you do. You are not taking all the things. They, max, they ask you to make the order, but you have kept some for yourself. And you are still charging the person. So, I, hey. Verse number five. Hello. No, you see, there are some things it's never done. You look and then you, you say you have not stolen. Listen. I'm telling you a truth. I'm telling you a truth. So you, you kept back, you kept back something. Why? Why? It's it's all pointed to greed. And most of the time, those things that you try to keep and you are putting it here and you are putting it here, it doesn't help your life. Then you will be angry for not. You are angry for what you yourself you stole. So, so, so then the, the Ananias and Sapphira, they kept back. You, you, you said you want to honor. You, you, no, you, you, you brought it. If you have done this, listen, halfway honor is equal to total dishonor. And tonight we want to come before the Lord and we want to worship him. God says in Hebrews 10, 38 that he, you know, the, 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 the judge shall live by faith or the righteous shall live by faith. But, you know, his heart is not pleased with those who draw back. He is not happy with those who draw back, who retract themselves. We need to come to that place where we write, give proper premiums to the happenings of our life. We should be able to come before the Lord and give God his due. Tell your neighbor, give God his due. Hallelujah, with your strength, with your talent, come before the Lord. He bought you with a price, therefore you need to glorify him in your body. Hallelujah, come before the Lord, give him your best. Hallelujah, 
You must count the cost. Of course, if you want to worship the governors, it will cost you. If you want to worship God, it will cost you. May it cost you to serve God. Tell four people, may it cost you to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so then, what do you value? As valuers of life, what do we value? We must come before him and then value him and make sure that we revere him. Because intrinsically, we have been wired to worship. We have all been wired to worship. And we must worship. We must worship. You can't pretend in worship. Worship is who we are. That's how he wired us to be. Hallelujah. Yes, I know people talk about your nice face. They talk about your nice hair, your nice shape. They are all for God's worship. He has fearfully and wonderfully made you so that you will worship him. Rise up on your feet wherever you are, please. Rise up wherever you find yourself. Hallelujah. We used to sing an old song. It says, all the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. Yes, yes, yes. No one on earth should give glory. All the glory. No one on earth. Hallelujah. We are coming before the Lord in any way we have sifted part of his glory in worship and in reverence to him. And as I shared this, you realize you saw that the enemy of, of honor was fighting you and therefore you realize that mm, all that I thought that I was doing, it was halfway worship. Lord, I ask for mercy. Can we come before the Lord right now wherever you are? Just ask God for mercy in the name of your, maybe your perception, maybe what you thought was something had come your way and has polluted your heart, polluted your thought, polluted your mind, polluted your dealings with God and you be, my God you might be in church but your heart is not in it pray right now as God for his mercy that God by your blood in the name of Jesus set me apart I cannot worship two masters I will love one and hate the other come before me but I come before you and I ask for your mercies in the name of Jesus Rabo Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this we are, we are praying. In the Old Testament, you look at, you know, from 1 Samuel and so on, where um, Eli's sons, Hophini and Phinehas, wrote. The Bible had said to Moses that when the people come before the Lord and they are sacrificing, the part of the animals, the fat and the entrance and other places of the animal belong to God. It should be bent wholly to the Lord. But you read first Samuel second, you realize that Hophni and Phineas, when they went to the people, they took even their fat. They took it for themselves. And it ended in their demise. They died off. There was no succession to Eli's priesthood. Samuel had to come and take over. And you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Anytime we take what is due God, we rob God of his honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My question to us tonight is that have we taken any portion that belongs to God? Is there any portion, any part of our life that belongs to God but we have held it? He gave you breath. 
You are breathing, but you don't want to serve God. It means you are withholding that thing from him. He gave you strength. He says, worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. But you will keep the strength. You will carry out with the strength. But you will not worship God with your strength. He gave you money. It is I who gave you the power to make wealth. Do you remember that he gave you this? And have you given him his first fruit, his tithe, and other things? If you have kept it, he says that you have robbed me. You have robbed me of my due. In what ways have we robbed God of our due? Sometimes you have a talent. He said, I won't put it before. No, I take my talent off. I won't put it there. You can't use I won't sing. I won't pray. I won't do this. This is why I always say, whenever you take it away, deliverance and, and salvation will come from somewhere else. And you have somebody will come and do it better than you were doing. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you made me for yourself. I am all yours. I will glorify you in my body. Everything I have, my mind, my soul, my treasure, my talent, everything I have is yours. I give myself away. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and talk to God right now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come before the Lord. Pray right now. Come on now. There are several things we do, people of God. You might be watching, you don't know. Yes, but lay tire. You can learn from this. In the name of Jesus, God has made this preternatural investment in you. And it's okay for Him to require daily devotion from you. He has made you to worship Him. And it's okay for Him to withdraw, make withdrawals from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, come before him now. Talk to him. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Sharagese. Shagrazeke. Eboka barabaya. Shabarabaya. In the name of Jesus. I get scared of Ananias and Sapphira. They died before they kept back. They kept back what belonged to the Lord. They kept back. When you read that account, Peter said that, ah, when you sold it, wasn't it yours? Why didn't you decide but you give half? You see, and that one is even dangerous. You pretending that you are worshipping God and you are not is dangerous than anything. And Peter told them, even though you think you are speaking to Peter, you are speaking to the Holy Ghost. What are the things you think you are doing towards your pastor but you are doing towards God? And it becomes dishonor. If I be the father, where is my honor? Very, very important. Jim Elliot said this and I love his statement. He said, he's no fool who gives what he cannot keep in order to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool. He is no fool. He is no fool. You think that that person who comes before the Lord and giving his all, worshipping God, loving him, is a fool. No, the person has gone to work eight hours, is tired, is still lifting up holy hands unto the Lord, loving God, giving his something and something, loving God, serving, cleaning, worship, doing something, ushering, doing something. He is no fool. Who gives what he cannot keep in order to gain what he cannot lose? He is no fool. Can somebody lift up your right hand, your left hand as well? Say that, Lord Jesus, I give myself away. Any way I might have kept back, in any way I may have kept back, your glory, I let go. I surrender it all unto you. Have your way. Have your way. Receive every honor. All the glory comes to you. I worship you. Let all of us come before the Lord. Worship the Lord. Tonight will be a new night. It will be a new life unto you. It will be a miracle. Come on, lift up your voice. Come before the Lord. Talk to God right now. Sharoka Zibata. Sharoka Zibata. Eketa Zopaya. Ebosha Batala. In the name of Jesus, worship the Lord. They work. In the name of Jesus, this convocation come before the Lord. Worship God. Bless His name. Worship God. Bless His name. 
Worship God. Bless His name. Worship God. Bless His name. Sister, do that. Do that on behalf of your family. Do that on behalf of your spouse. Brother, do that on behalf of your spouse. Do that on behalf of your family. Do that on behalf of the church. Do that on behalf of the institution. Do that come before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Sharabakaya. Sabradaza. Rebabu Sarabaya. Ebabu Sadara. Ekabak Sarabaya. I come before you, my God. I worship you. Yakabaradoya. In the name of Jesus. From the body of my heart. Yes, the God of my mind. So, the body of my heart. Come on, come before the Lord. Serve the Lord. We clap and serve the Lord with all your heart. Magnify Him. Exalt Him. Lift Him higher. Come on now. Rabu Sarabaya. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let go of yourself. Come before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. People might think that you are going to be loved because you honor God. With your worship, with your suffering, I come before you. Even in pain, I worship you. Lord God, no matter what it is, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Worship the Lord. That is who He is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to magnify Him now. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing, there is nothing you can do. Oh, oh God, my right, oh, oh, you be my Oh, Magnify Come on now, what's the go? I can't do that for you. Come on now, lift up your hands, everybody. Lift up your hands. If you can with me, lift up your hands. Sabada Rabo Oh, 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 I release every prejudice. 
I release every preference. I release any hypocrisy, any agenda of hell that is the enemy of honor that has been eating into my life. I replace it with humility. I replace it with your will. I give you the right of way in the name of Jesus. My words will tally with my actions by your grace in the name of Jesus. I come before you and I acknowledge you in all my ways in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I resign. I resign from intolerance. I declare I will not prejudge people. In the name of Jesus, have your way in me. Any legalisms, any legalisms that comes my way and gives me the wrong perception, I ask for mercy. Wrong perception, you will not fight my honor of God. I will see well and honor God well. I will see well and I will honor God well. Come on, lift up your voice and come before the Lord. Pride, prejudices, preferences, legalism, hypocrisy. Let's declare an end to them. In the name of Jesus. Sharagosea. Sharadorobosaya. Wababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
Hallelujah. The economy itself makes many sick. Jopre Kataria, we come before you, Lord, right now. You are our healer, you are our, our kinsman redeemer. And we pray that by your stripes, heal everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, anyone ailing in the head, in the bone, in the heart, in every organ in their body, in the 12 systems of the body, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, heal right now in the name of Jesus. Heal marriages, heal the business, heal every lot of dears. You are Jehovah Rapha, for we come to you and you heal us. Deliver us, O oh God. Change us, turn us, and we will turn in the name of Jesus. We pray, my God, that Lord God, you will grant us this anyone who has a sentence of death by the power of the blood. We overturn that sentence. We overturn that sentence. Powers that be in the heavens, under the earth, in the sea, in the bloodline that are working, that are scheming, that are plowing, we disappoint the crafty. Give them their own blood to drink. Give them their own flesh to eat. Any child who is under any satanic sentence, any parent, anybody, any student, we pray right now with sick authority. In the name of Jesus, we hold bound every agenda of hell. In the name of Jesus, we hold bound every work of the fowler. And we command your people heal. Receive your healing right now. Anything on your eyes, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the doctors have told you they are managing. Receive your healing. Thank you, Jesus, for having heard us. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let every believer say a big amen. Hallelujah. God bless you for watching. You can take an offering as we come before the Lord tomorrow, same time, 5 30. We'll be coming here, we'll be worshiping, we'll be praising, hallelujah, serving the Lord, going deeper than ever before, be part of it, hallelujah. Amen. may be reminded that Thursday, Friday, are anointing services, and on Sunday, we bring the um, convocation to a close, hallelujah, a double service. Amen. We'll have a special communion time, amen, and so be part of it, amen. Take an offering as we come before the Lord, let us bless, bless any offering have your tithe as well in the house you have your offering whatever let's pray over it father this is our seed let it be acceptable in that side oh god our rock our deliverer in the name of jesus christ many who are doing this by electronic means momo whatever but the lord touch them in the name of jesus christ let your blessings be the portion of your people in jesus name amen god bless you come your way tomorrow the same time Amen.